Good evening, and welcome to St. Mary's Christmas program this year. We're so excited to have Mrs. Yednath and Mrs. Erickson as our choir and band directors for tonight's performance. The children have practiced ceaselessly um, for many, many weeks, and they sound absolutely beautiful. So with that, I have a couple just quick announcements, please. Um, please, no flash photography. It is a distraction to the students as they sing or play in, their, in the band. Please put your phones on silent. And after the program, you can pick your child up in the NPR room, which is the multi-purpose room um, on the outside of the church. So again, welcome to St. Mary's Christmas program. We're so excited you're here. And God bless you, each and every one of you. Thank you. Before we officially begin tonight, uh, I'll just, I'm just going to say just a quick prayer to welcome or to get us ready for this night. I look forward to, saw this this morning, they did a great job, and we'll look forward to putting on a good show for you guys this evening as well. Uh, we ask to continue to have a great and joyful Christmas season and an Advent as well. And especially today is, I told the kids at Mass this afternoon that today's the Feast of St. Lucy, and Lucy means light. And that's the idea. This is the season of light, where the light of the world comes into the world. And what a gift it is that Christ himself comes into our world on, the, on Christmas Day. And so with that idea in our hearts and minds, brothers and sisters, let's take a minute at the beginning of this time to say a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, we ask that you would send your spirit down upon each of us gathered here tonight. That you tell us that you are the light sent into the world. And that you, you might light up our hearts this night through the joy of these children, through the joy that they bring to us. We thank you for their families, for their friends, for their parents, their grandparents, for their cousins, uncles, aunts, whoever it is that's here tonight. We ask that you would bless them and allow them to experience the joy that only this Christmas season can bring through the power of Christ. And Lord, we ask all these things, but most especially we do everything we do through your power and with your, through, for your greater glory. As together we pray together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone enjoy the program. The voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground should become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it, to get, see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry out? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field.
to sing and work with these kids this fall. And one thing you'll notice is that we don't uh, use a lot of instrumental accompaniments. And that's because we want uh, to help train their ears and their voices uh, to be able to match pitch. And they're doing a really awesome job. Um, the piece you just heard is around, which is one of the earliest and easiest ways to start training our ears to hear harmony and to sing harmony. So there's, they were singing the same thing, but at different times. And in doing that, getting to experience singing in harmony. So they're doing a wonderful job with that. So this next song is another lullaby. And we're going to have TJ playing the bells for us on this one. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to the public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because that what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but did, but he, he did not consummate the mar their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the beginning band class for 2019-2020. They have only had their instruments for about three, three and a half months, something like that. And they're, they're doing really well, turning in a lot of practice time. We're going to change the program a little bit. We're going to do rolling along last.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For us, a child is born. For us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
And there were shepherds out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared to with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests.
Ahona Yeshwana is a traditional spiritual from South Africa. We are singing it in the Soto language. The words to this song remind us of the joy of finding Jesus in any season, especially at Christmas time. The text to this song says, there's nobody like Jesus, there's nobody like him. I looked every, around everywhere, I turned around everywhere. I found my Jesus, there's nobody like him. When the, angels have left, when the angels have left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to Menar, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told had, uh, what had had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at the shepherd at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just in were, which were just as they had been told. And thank you to Josiah Brummett, who filled in on that reading at the last minute. We appreciate him doing that.
Again, thank you very much for coming out tonight. And before we bring the eighth grade out for their nativity, I'd like to give one more hand to all the students that have performed tonight. At this time, I would like Father Adam to come to the front, please. With much appreciation for everything that he has done, is doing, and will continue to do for our school and our parish, we'd like to present him with a Christmas gift from all of us to Father Adam. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. That's not working very well. Thank you all very much. That's working much better. All right. Um, greatly appreciative. Um, we'll let the, every, the excitement begin. I'll do a closing blessing and uh, give you a few words at the end here. Um, this is just a great gift and a great pleasure. So um, we'll let the kids begin the show from here. Thank you all. that in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, who was the Roman emperor at that time, that a census of the whole world should be taken. The Jews were to go to the city or town, which was the home of their ancestors, and register. A carpenter named Joseph from Nazareth went to Bethlehem, the city of David, to register. With him went his engaged wife, Mary, who was expecting a child very soon. Once in Bethlehem, they searched diligently for a place to rest for the night. However, there was not a place to stay in the crowded town, and no one would take them in. Very late, Joseph found a small manger, a place where hay was stored for cattle. This was the place for which all eternity God had chosen for the birthplace of his only son, Jesus Christ. It was here in this small stable that Mary gave birth to a son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the village inn. In the nearby fields, there were several shepherds guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, without warning, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. The angel was shown brightly with the glory of the Lord. The shepherds were filled with fear, but the angel reassured them by saying, do not be afraid, for I bring you news of great joy. There has been born today in the town of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And let this be a sign to you that you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then appeared a whole host of other angels, who together praised God by saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to men of good will. The shepherds were stunned. They said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing which the Lord has made known to us. In the village, they found Mary, Joseph, and the infant Jesus, who was lying in the manger. At this glorious sight, the shepherds were filled with joy and understanding. After Jesus had been born in Bethlehem, some wise men astrologers came to the Jerusalem from the east. Where is the newborn king of the Jew? We have seen his star in far off eastern lands and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard of this, he sent a private message to the astrologers, asking them to come see him. At this meeting, he found out from them the exact time when they first saw the star. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I may go worship him too. After this interview with King Herod, the astrologers started out again on the journey, and look, the star appeared to them again, standing over Bethlehem. Their joy knew no bounds. Entering the house where the baby and Mary and the baby and Mary, his mother, were, they threw themselves down before him, worshiping him with open hearts. 
They opened their presents and gave the baby Jesus magnificent gifts. First, they presented him with gold. The next wise men had with him frankincense. And finally, the baby Jesus was given myrrh. But when the astrologers returned to their own land, they did not go through Jerusalem to report to Herod, for God had warned them in a dream to return home by another way. In your bulletin, you'll find printed Silent Night. We're going to invite you to sing with us uh, and join in on this hymn of praise. kid in my Catholic grade school growing up, and I'll tell you what, every man is called to be a father in some form, and what's, there's nothing more awesome than all of your kids gathered together. Every mom, every dad gets that, and this is one of those opportunities as a spiritual father that I get to get all my kids together and be with them and spend time with them, all of them. Eight years old, 88 years old, or eight months old, as we were hanging out in the back just a little bit ago. And uh, this is a gift and a great blessing. And I just want you all to know what a great gift it is for me that you let, our, let all of our teaching staff and myself and all of the staff here at the school help draw your kids uh, to a greater understanding of who God is and a greater understanding of how to live their lives in this world. Uh, for the Lord, everything we do for Him, for His glory, and so thank you for letting your student, or letting these students be here, and the gift for us to have them here. And, and I also want to thank uh, 
Mrs. Yednak and Mrs. Erickson for a really, really great job done tonight. So um, let's also hear it from them. And then also, one, I just thank you for having your kids here at St. Mary's. It's a blessing and a gift to have them here. Uh, we look forward to having this night every night, every year. And uh, we, we probably don't, we probably, you're probably like, maybe not every night, but every, every year, what a great gift, what a great blessing to have you all here and join us. I think um, we are all set to go. I'm just going to give a little blessing as we close up. And uh, I'm sure there'll want to be some pictures and things along those lines. But let's ask the Lord's blessing over us as we close tonight. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into this world on this day that we celebrate today, this Christmas day that is coming quickly. That the light came into the world, that we in this world would find and experience the joy that comes in knowing you, our Father. That we might know true love that we might know what it means to follow you and to listen to you. We thank you for the blessings of each of these families, for all of the families who gather here tonight. We ask that you keep them safe and that their hearts and their minds might be consumed with you and that they might help all in their care to continue to follow you. Lord, we ask all this and we ask that you protect and bless these families in this season of Christmas fast approaching. And may Almighty God bless each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, everybody have a great evening. Thank you for coming. If you need pictures, uh, go ahead and do pictures. Is there anything else that I should say from anybody that, that we need to make sure makes smooth? All right. Okay, the kids go out that way. Pick up your kids over here uh, in the NPR. So pick up your students there.